Hello and welcome to Smash Course, a legally distinct version of Crash Course. I'm your host, Tandaka, and today we're going to be learning about the public health system and the role of the psychologist within it. But first, what exactly is the public health system? The concept of public health has existed in tandem with human civilization since our early origins. However, the concept has taken many forms in different times and places. Around 2,000 years ago, public health was inexorably linked to religious and cultural customs. The concept of causality evolved over time as cultures become more cognizant of the physical roots of illness. For example, the ancient Greeks discovered a notable link between going into a swamp and getting malaria. Soon the concept of public health involved keeping people out of the swamp to keeping people away from each other. Diseases such as leprosy and dancing mania created a need for quarantine. Although such a concept had existed previously, it was now the mandate of a civilization to make centralized decisions for the sake of public health. Early formal public health approaches tended to focus on two aspects of health, nutrition and immunization. Public health in the contemporary sphere is considerably more intersectional as more modern societies integrate medical health into the public health sector. For our first guest, we have Dr. Dulot, a representative from the HPCSA, who's here to talk about the public health care system. Welcome, Dr. Dulot. What are the limitations faced by the public health care system? So, unfortunately, the public health system in South Africa is underfunded and understaffed. However, the workers who make up the public health system do their best under such stringent circumstances to treat and prevent illness, as well as promote health through health promotion campaigns. Can you describe how the public health care system is structured? Yeah, of course. So, there are three levels of institutions in the public health system, and they work in tandem to treat patients by up-referring and down-referring based on the patient's need and the severity of their ailments. So you get primary, secondary, and tertiary healthcare facilities. An example of how these would work in tandem is, let's say an individual suffering from psychological distress. So their first stop would be a primary healthcare facility, which is most commonly their local health clinic. Here, they'll receive a basic assessment and basic care. But then if it's determined that their symptoms need treatment beyond their level of this clinic, they are up-referred to a secondary healthcare facility. So in Makanda, this would be Settlers Day Hospital. And mostly this up-referral will be due to drug accessibility. So as you go up the chain, the availability of stronger drugs increases. Moreover, if the patient is beyond the care capabilities of the secondary healthcare facility, they are up-referred once more to a tertiary institution. So in Makanda, this would be the Fort England Psychiatric Hospital. Here, they'll receive the most specialized care. And you spoke about down referrals. How do those work? So down referral comes in when the symptoms of the patient decrease in severity and they no longer require round the clock specialized care. As I said earlier, the public health care system is underfunded and understaffed. So in this case, the patients may be down referred to a secondary or even primary facility for maintenance to make room for other patients who have not yet received specialized care. We now have Dr. Phil Afaya and Dr. Kevin joining us from Fort England in Makanda, Eastern Cape. They're psychologists there and they're going to give us some information about the role of the psychologist in such an institution. Welcome, gentlemen. What qualifications does one need to work as a psychologist in an institution like Fort England? Qualification needed is a master's degree in addition to a 12 months internship. You will also need to have passed the board examination. And what level of care does a psychologist at Fort England work in? And what are the other levels? At Fort England, the psychologist works at a tertiary level of care. There is a team for treatment of acute chronic illnesses as well as the use of the recovery model. Uh, the recovery model is usually um, a way that we allow patients to build a new identity so that they can uh, go into society with more self-esteem and more confidence. What responsibilities does a psychologist have at Fort England and the public health care system as a whole? Well, in Fort England, um, we assess and diagnose in and out patients. 
And um, some patients will come into our maximum security for 30, for 30 days into which they'll be assessed to see if they can stand trial and if they were in the right mental state when they committed the crime that they did and if they're not going through some type of issue behind it. Is there any links between the primary health care level and the tertiary care level in respect to the work done by the psychologist? The link comes in when the patient is referred from, no, is when the patient is assessed by a nurse or ward nurse at the primary health care centre who is then referred to a secondary health care centre like Settlers Hospital. Um, if they cannot handle the patient and the patient is referred back to a psychologist at the tertiary, tertiary um, health care centre such as Fort England. And what staff shortages are common at Fort England? Um, there are a few staff shortages in, in, at Fort England, but we aren't a common case. Um, there are a few. There are less social workers and occupational therapists. Um, this causes a few issues because it means that social workers will have to take on a lot more cases at one time, and this could distract them from focusing on specific cases. And the lack of occupational therapists means that a lot of our patients are um, left with a lot of free time, which is not very good for recovery and health um, in this environment. It is said that the public health sector is chronically underfunded. Does this have an effect on the work that you do at Fort England? Um, again, we can't be used as an example for a normal mental institution because we receive national government funding, which um, supplies us with lot, lots of money, so we don't really lack resources. But some of the problems that we do face at Fort England um, is that we don't have enough also speaking um, psychologists, which prohibits them from talking to some of the patients um, openly and fluently, which can be a problem. And another problem with funding in general in the country is that there is no place for intellectually disabled people to go to um, and to be kept safe and to like have a, a laugh. So we land up taking a lot of them into the maximum security units so that they'll so that they'll safe because they're usually a danger to themselves. Um, so this is another one of the problems that we face with um, public health in the country. Is there a program for when patients are discharged from the hospital? Do they go permanently back into society at the first opportunity? Or is there a back and forth that needs to be done? Um, we do have a program set out for patients. Um, they don't go straight back into society as soon as we, uh, in, in one go. There's a process, like a ladder that they have to climb to get out. So. Um, when they reach uh, one of the half functioning wards, they will be allowed one weekend out and then they'll come back and they'll be assessed and to make sure everything went okay. And then that increases to a week and then to a month and then to six months and then to a year. And once they have gone home for a year and they've been assessed and there's been no problems, then they can begin the process to discharge themselves from the mental hospital. Next we'll have Dr. Weird and Dr. Watt, two experts in dealing with the role of the psychologist in the public health system. What gaps should the psychologists fill in the public health system? So, in terms of what gaps the psychologist needs to fill within the public health system, firstly, it is in helping people come to terms with their illness. Secondly, the patient-centered care. Little is known about, patient, about how patients find a provider and what influences whether they stay in treatment or not, how they would regard their treatment, and satisfaction influences outcomes. Mm, and, uh, Satisfaction influences outcomes, so and so on. Equitable treatment is also important due to the inequalities that exist within South Africa. Such problem areas are related to the differences in gender and other demographics, socioeconomic status, and locational variables. The role of the psychologist should be, a, should be to mandate for an equitable and healthy society. Let's take a look at some very important definitions. Primary health care. This is essential healthcare made accessible at a cost that a country and community can afford, with methods that are practical, scientifically sound and socially acceptable. This approach is organised to reduce exclusion and social disparities in health. It is people-centred, intersectoral, collaborative and promotes the participation of all stakeholders. Secondary healthcare. Secondary healthcare is specialist care that is typically rendered in a hospital setting following a referral from a primary or community health care facility. 
Tertiary health care. Tertiary health care is specialist care that is rendered at central hospitals. Public health in South Africa exists in a controversial and challenging state. Mental health is not prioritised due to the governmental focus on addressing epidemics such as TB and HIV and AIDS. Despite this, even the most funded institutions in the country, such as Fort England Psychiatric Hospital, are in need of vital resources, such as intellectual disability specialists, a more linguistically diverse treatment team, and equipment necessary for treatment such as ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. Psychologists working in the public health sector continuously take on a number of roles, from the administrative to the diagnostic to their roles as healers in the contemporary medical sphere. Although the job presents a number of challenges, its growth and promotion over time is imperative to fostering a healthy, happy South Africa. Thank you to the rich diversity of doctors that we've heard from today. As we have learned, public health in the modern era is far more complicated and interconnected than in earlier years. We are now as concerned with health promotion as we are with illness prevention. Yet, the task of changing people's attitudes regarding health behaviours is one that cannot be fought by the doctor's office alone. It requires the collective effort of healthcare pra practitioners, community health workers, providers and everyday citizens. Psychology is therefore an indispensable tool in the formation of a holistic, healthy society. Thank you for watching. This has been Smash Course Psychology. I'm your host, Tandeka, and you've been educated. <laughs>